All right, it's that time of the month where we're checking out the latest version of Ubuntu. It's 22.04. So let's begin. Now, I generally like to check out their long-term support versions, which is 24. Anything with an even number, I like to check out. That's because that's their long-term support version. And this is their latest version that's coming out sometime this month, which is in April. They are 24.04. Now, first thing I wanna do is jump into their installer. Now, I am running this off of my Proxmox and I am running a virtual machine. I do tend to like to run these natively, but I wanted to show you guys the installer and what they changed in here. Now, here we go through the language selection. We're gonna hit English for next. And then here we could actually see the accessibility features that we could actually enable during the install, which was never here before. So say like if I wanted to do desktop zoom, I can actually now do that by just enabling it and then disabling it through here. So if you have problems installing the operating systems before because of accessibility issues, you can enable them now during the installation. Next, we have our keyboard layout. And then if you have internet or not, so I do have internet, which is wired. And then you can update the installer if you want, just in case if there is a newer installer and this breaks something, you can update it and install it. I'm gonna skip that. At this point, you can actually try the Ubuntu or install it. So I'm gonna hit install. Now this is the new part or the cool part. The interactive install, which is what we're used to, or the automated install, which allows you to actually use a YAML file. Pre-install this operating system on multiple machines the same way. So if you needed uh, Firefox for every machine, or if you're gonna do this on a virtual machine and you need um, QEMU guest agent, you can actually add it to your YAML auto install file. And I'm gonna show you how that looks. So here's an auto install file in YAML. And you can see it's gonna include packages like uh, Ubuntu desktop for snaps if you want Firefox, or GNOME 38 or GDK. This is just an example that I'm going through, but you can actually set all this up in one file called the auto install YAML. And then you can load it up into this auto install YAML right over here and it'll install whatever you have listed down here. A lot of uh, newer operating systems are going towards this method because it's just easier if you wanna mass install their operating system for multiple machines that are the same specs and everything and you need specific applications. Uh, which is really cool. I do like the fact that they did include this into the installer. But I, I'm not going to use it this time. I am going to check out the interactive installer. And then in here, it's just a standard. You go through the third party, download additional drivers if you need to, hit next. You can erase the entire disk, hit next, and then go through your setup over here. And then if you have Active Directory, you can actually use the Active Directory instead of uh, setting up your own Linux password. But yeah, this it's pretty standard as far as if you go through this method. But the only cool part that I was showing you before was the accessibility and definitely that um, automatically install part right over here with the YAML. All right, so this is the first time checking out Ubuntu 24.04 with GNOME 46. Uh, and I'm running this on my Proxmox environment. And to take a look at it, it looks pretty standard. They do have the menu on the left. I did add a couple of extensions just to try it out. But yeah, it looks pretty much the same as before as far as the layout goes. Now I'm gonna go over to show apps and we're gonna head over to settings. Now they did change some stuff over here and they made it less cluttered, which I really do appreciate because before it was very long and it had a lot of stuff hidden here that could have just been sorted out a little bit better. So to begin, we have network. So you can still set up your VPNs if you have wired connection, um, Bluetooth, you have your displays if you wanna change your resolution, it still has fractional scaling if you need to, but I'm not gonna play around with that. Uh, sound, they change slightly. This looks almost the same, but they do have better selection, especially like if you go over to this menu and drop down this. I used to have to use an extension for this, but now it comes natively with Ubuntu notification bar on the top right. But yes, that's another thing. Uh, the power menu, balance, power saver, nothing much change over here. Multitasking does have the uh, option to use the hot corners and active uh, screen edges if you want to enable or disable that. And then we have appearances. Now I do like the appearance of the dark mode. It looks really good. And I do really like that now, you see a th uh, the wallpaper? If I chose this wallpaper with the line in the middle, which means you have a dark and light mode. But yeah, you can keep it in the light mode, you can keep it in the dark mode, whatever you want. Then you have the accent colors, which changes the folder icons as well. So you see this, this went to blue. If I keep it back at orange, you could see it's purple to orange. And then we have Ubuntu desktop. So we could change a few things over here. Desktop icon size, position, the dock, if you want to auto hide this dock over here. We change it on the position of the screen if you want it on the bottom as well. But it's standard for Ubuntu to keep it on the left, so I'm just going to keep it there. 
and then you have all your app selection. Now this is a huge list compared to what it was before, but this is where you would change your default apps and your app selection over here. Notifications is pretty standard as well. Search features is pretty much the same as before as well. And then you have your online accounts. Now, apparently there are more things that you can add on to here than what it has on the list, but it does have a decent amount like Google Apps, Nextcloud, Web Devs, IMAP, SMTP, stuff like that, uh, Microsoft Exchange. So I do like that they do have all this already pre-built in. But if you wanted to add like say one cloud or something, it might it will come up on this list as well. Then you have sharing and this is your device name and then your media sharing. So if you want to share a folder or something like that, you could share the folder through here. Next we have the mouse and touchpad, which looks pretty much the same except for these icons over here. Keyboard, you probably have the shortcuts as well. Alternate character keys, compose and shortcuts. Color, uh, depending on your monitor, you could have different selections for colors. And then you have printer for cups. Accessibility, this is similar to what we saw on the installer where you could actually add these features into your Ubuntu just by enabling them. So if I need something for Zoom, I can actually enable this desktop Zoom, enable that feature. Then you have your privacy and security. Now this used to be broken out into the setting menu on the left. So this used to be, I think it was also called privacy and security on the left side, but it was broken into the left menu over here. Now they just turned it into one menu, which uh, consolidated everything to one area. Same thing with system. And I do really like the fact that they did that because this shouldn't have to clutter the left menu on the left side. Now I'm gonna go over the system and they have the same thing. This used to be on the left side, like remote desktop, it was in sharing and uh, regional and time and all this other stuff used to be on the left menu. Now, what's cool about this, uh, similar to what 22 had as well, is your remote desktop now allows you to use RDP. So you can see that this is remote desktop, it is enabled and you have Ubuntu and you could set up your password and everything and you can use RDP. So I'm gonna show you an example here. All right, so here we are on my Windows 11 VM and I am using Guacamole. So if you're not familiar with that, it's just a web-based client so I can RDP into stuff. And I am actually gonna use the Windows 11 test machine to remote desktop into our 206, which is the same IP address as our Ubuntu. You could see that this is the same screen that you see over here. And if I was to minimize this, it's minimized over here. And I can open this as well. So I do have remote desktop support as well on uh, Ubuntu, which is pretty cool. And it comes natively now, so you don't have to like adjust anything. You just have to enable it and it's there. But yeah, otherwise, um, everything seems to be in its place. I do really like that remote shell. You could change all the regional settings. So we're gonna go into the about and you could see that this is running uh, four gigs of RAM and I am running on a VM machine. I'm gonna go over to system details. It's running GNOME version 46, Wayland, and it's on kernel 6.8, which is very, very new. I think 6.9 is the latest, but 6.8 has all the hardware updates and everything for AMD. So yeah, we're at a pretty late version of the kernel for this. All right now, next thing I, I noticed is that uh, the file manager has slightly got an update to it. You can now search the current folder with this icon right over here. So current folder, I could search for stuff using this, but if I want to search for stuff system-wide, it would be this. So it's kind of like you have two search bars on each one. Another thing we could do now is actually search for more detail. So this used to just say modified and then this is it. There's not much detailed information on this, but you can now go into here, go into preferences, and then actually go into more detailed explanation of the files. This gets expanded and then now it's more detailed expansion. So I kind of like that because I like to use it when it's this mode instead of the icon mode. But yeah, otherwise uh, not much has changed other than those couple of things. The notifications also has changed as well. So let me see if I could make a notification happen. I'm gonna take a screenshot and there you go. That's uh, one newer notification. They have the big icon on the over here on the side. And then the notification itself is a lot bigger than the previous version, which I like as well because I like the notifications on Linux. Now on extension wise, I played around with the extensions a little bit. You can use the extension like Caffeine and a couple of Astro Meter. This is Astro Meter, I believe this is called. And it does show up over here, which is really cool. And I do like that they show up here and as well as on top over here, if I want to enable or disable it, it's right over here. And if I want to look for other menus, it's up here as well. So the extensions, it does work. Now I am using a version of the extension manager that is not from GNOME, which I don't know why GNOME don't just take over this version because this version is way much better than what GNOME ships. Just the fact because I could actually browse and download and install all the ones I want directly through the program. Now, 
if I go over to their store and go over to extensions, there's two. The green one is the official GNOME version, which sucks. And then this one is created by Matthew Jakeman. So I would use this one because it actually has that browse menu. Otherwise, um, yeah, I could install uh, all my plugins through here. Uh, it's called Astro Monitor, which gives me this and you could customize everything you want to see your system stats. And I just installed Caffeine so my computer won't go to sleep as I'm making this video. Obviously, since this is GNOME, there are a lot of extensions that you could put on here. But yeah, those are the couple of things that I would actually take a look at. Otherwise, um, so far I do like it. It is a lot more responsive than the original version that I played around with. So I do really like this new version. And I might switch over to the 24 because I like their long-term support better than their 23 versions, the odd number versions. And it's a little bit too late for us to jump into checking the system stats because I already ran everything. But you could see it's 1.5 gigs of RAM. This is how everything looks like as far as file system goes. It's not too much. It's only 9.4 gigs and I didn't really install anything other than the couple extensions. But yeah, it works pretty well. And that's about it for Ubuntu 24. Now it is going to come later this month. But yes, this is the time to take a look at it. So if you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And thanks for watching.